it's not the, the choice is not between natural gas and coal. That is a, that's what I call the straw man choice. The problem is this. When you have something like Coke Industries, K-O-C-H, I've called them all sorts of names. <laughs> um, they are billionaires and they are investing millions in these super PACs to get rid of President Obama because he put a stop on 13 coal permits and a few other things. These guys don't care about your water supply, they don't care about you, they don't care about your state, they don't care about your private property. All they care about is the billions they're gonna make. That is what people have to say, you know what, no. Come up with another plan. Because ironically, every time we tell somebody no, really tell them no, they find another way to make the money. And they always do. And the technology will be there if anyone has the will or is required to, to do it. As long as you just say, here, go ahead, exploit it, take it, make your billions and move back to the Hamptons, they're going to. Uh, and I think that's, that's the choices between standing up and saying no, the water supply is sacred, you can't do it. They've, tr they've trashed it enough, quite frankly, but I, I think it's a false choice. Not, it's a great question, but you're I mean, also... what other choice do we have, I guess, is what I'm asking. You develop other, other forms of energy like yeah, okay, the Europeans you, do. Okay, like what, in particular? Uh, algae. Hmm? Yeah, people are... are I mean, there's ways it. to conserve. Uh, I agree uh, with that. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, but... I mean, they're, they're know, damming up half of Brazil and Argentina just so people can play video games. Um, they're going to flood the Patagonian region just so people can play video games. It's nice to complain about. That's incredibly What's the stupid. solution? The solution is uh, people have to say politically, you have to stop and pick another path. Once there's political will, they'll start solving the problem. Okay, For example, can I, let me give you one example of something that worked. In California, okay. it was solid waste, solid waste. Our landfills, you know, we just have trash. Well, the Orange County communities were responding to a law that the state passed. The state said, you have to reduce your landfill footprint by X percent every year. We don't care how you do it, but do it or face a fine. Guess what? A company popped up in Orange County called Rainbow Recycling. They came in and said, we will reduce your the whole, for the whole county of Newport Beach and a couple around it, we will reduce your landfill footprint. And if we don't meet those new statutory limits by reducing what you put in the landfill, we will pay your fine. City of Newport said, bring it. They got the contract. I have met the man who formed the company. I have toured the facility. He's a multimillionaire. <laughs> he made a ton of money and he was down to such a small amount of trash that they could grind it up and take it to a worm farm. Ingenuity, solve your problem. Someone just has to say no. And my favorite quote from him, and he's a very conservative Republican, I might add. <laughs> my favorite quote from him was, if you want it to end, bring it to a head. So as soon as the state of, Ten of California said, reduce your landfill contribution, we are running out of space, they did fracking, which is kind of what this was all about, has been going on for 60 years. It's nothing, no big uh, whoopee thing about it. It's been going on for 60 years. Millions of wells all over the United States, all over the world. If, if what we were seeing on the screen uh, was anything but a microcosm, uh, why am I 87 years old and healthy as a horse? I, I, I lived with my family in Midland, Texas for 35 years thousands and thousands of, of oil wells around us. There's no big uh, uh, big jump in, in uh, roughnecks, how many, many of them are dying young, I guess a lot of them get drunk and kill themselves, but uh, it has nothing to do with their, their hazards of, uh, from uh, where they work. It's not a small problem. The state of Pennsylvania, an article came out, I have a copy of his full, full spread, New York, pa uh, New York Times front page, several pages thereafter, um, the water supply in Pennsylvania has been wildly polluted. I don't have the details on it, but you can look it up. I'm sure you can find it online. It is a huge problem in Pennsylvania. Um, because of my work, I, I'll be just sitting in a conference room and hear about these cases. Um, I have it myself. Water supplies are polluted all over the United States. All over the United States. All over Tennessee. 
I wouldn't have a job. I'm busy full time with this stuff. Um, landfills that are leaching out enough aluminum particulates to kill everything in the watershed. TDEC knows about it. TDEC didn't even ask them to sample for the aluminum. They were dumping aluminum dross. We are one of the aluminum dross capitals of the United States. That stuff, is, we get 62, close to 60 inches of rain a year in Tennessee. You have any idea what that does when it falls on a 20 acre landfill full of aluminum particulates that, were, that came out of a recycling facility? The pollution is rampant. It's not small, it's a significant issue. So you either, you've got the, the cumulative effect from all the other pollutants, plus what you're gonna see from fracking, and I, I respectfully disagree, it's no small problem at all. It's a full-time job for me and a lot of other people. Uh, no photos of me, please. Absolutely none. Um, I want to talk about my family situation. Um, I have minerals that date back to the 1900s. My biological family in Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana. Never ever did anything. I was taught always never ever sign those minerals. We're holding the minerals so that nobody can harm our earth. Well, somebody new came into the family back in 2000, and somebody got a lease offer, a really nice lease offer, a really, really good, considered one of the best, 25%, and high dollar per acre for 250 acres in Johnson County, right outside of Cleburne, Texas. Okay, um, this person convinced this person to sign the paper and not tell the children or anybody else because we would prevent it. In 2007, a well began producing which was said to last 60 years. It's five years later. They're fixing to cap it in 60 days. I just found that out this afternoon that 30, 30 wells within several miles are being and have already been capped. Still plenty of gas coming out, but it costs too much. So, guess what? Are, are you saying they're capping the wells even though the gas is still available? Yes. Okay. Maybe y'all have heard of Chesapeake in the news. Um, so this lease is with Chesapeake. And Chesapeake, supposedly what I'm told, they've been choking this well because they have no more containers. They don't want to pay the money to send it to another part of the country. So they're going to Pennsylvania and all these other places and fracking because it's cheaper they don't have to pay the transportation um, there you go Chesapeake themselves told me this afternoon it was cheaper for them to frack in Pennsylvania and keep that because everything in Texas was you know there's no more containment they nobody wants to pay to send it out so my parents lost their last home to a super fund because of something that has to do with underground water um, my mom has Alzheimer's. I have had um, autoimmune disease since I was 35 years old. My children have problems. I don't know where that came from. I can't say that that's from that, but all I am is about let's protect the earth. And I know that we all are energy hogs. Um, By the way, on that issue, there's a book out it. called The Autoimmune Epidemic, and it is a compelling and pretty stunning book, but the general point of it uh, by a physician who's spent a lot of time researching it, she basically came to the conclusion that uh, we're reordering our own chemistry um, and uh, we're doing it through pollutants. It's a detailed discussion, very well footnoted. It's a great book. If I to me, looking at all of this, what's really important is the paradigm that you're looking at it through. You know, and I mean, it's a tragic example, but nuclear power was cool in Fukushima until several months ago. Um, you know, fracking works really well when fracking works, and when fracking doesn't work, if it happens to be where you live, you're screwed. You know, it's, it's, it's what paradigm are we looking at these situations through? Because I believe that we're really being brainwashed to a very limited point of view on how we live in the world. That the only choices we have are coal and gas and oil or, or solar or... It's almost like we're stuck in a paradigm that's, that is unable
to look beyond what we think we already know.